five. Excellent. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Jamie Allen. I am the media and entertainment lead at NVIDIA for the uh, UK and EMEA region. And I'm joined by my good friend uh, from the industry, Mr. Asa Bailey. Hello there. Hi. Um, so today we are going to talk a bit about production, which has obviously been a very hot topic for the last couple of years in both the uh, the very high end of film and, and episodic television production, um, but is becoming more and more uh, of an important tool set at every level of, of the production landscape. Um, and for us at NVIDIA, we have been very involved in the technology driving um, this capability and this you know, artistic creative um, platform for quite a few years now. Um, and Acer here has been involved in virtual production long before Mandalorian made it a big thing. Um, so Acer, please introduce yourself and the work that you guys do at OSF. Hi there. Um, yes, my name is Acer Bailey. I'm the CEO and virtual production supervisor at uh, Onset Facilities. Um, literally, as I start talking, we get a large, loud noise going past. So excuse me if that's um, if that's if you can hear that at the moment. Um, so yes, at Onset Facilities, we've been working on uh, developing verified virtual production pipelines for quite some time, as you say, well before the Mandalorian um, made it what it is today. Um, so we can we can go into that, I suppose. Yeah, so I think we should start with sort of what is virtual production because it's a lot more than than just what we've been seeing in in you know the Hollywood Reporter and and visual effects news about these Absolutely. huge meter led screens um so i'd love to get a bit of a uh, background from yourself for someone who's been involved in this the pre-led should we say um on what is a broad definition of virtual production for for us it's the um we have a cheesy saying which we call the gateway to the metaverse <laughs> but, it's a, but it is what it is <laughs> um it kind of sits there so virtual production sits there in the in, in it's that space between the, the real world and then the um as we like to call it the metaverse the, the world you know the digital universe um and virtual production is basically the translation and the building of that metaverse and um yeah we uh, and part of that now is is content production but quite frankly we've been everybody's been building in this world for quite some time it's now just a question of bringing more people into it and doing it in in, in a much more um broader sense absolutely and i guess the 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 concept of you know of green screen technology that's been around for a very long time now um has always been part of the virtual production landscape and being able to visualize on set in real time what is happening rather than what is you know the new sort of uh concept in virtual production of shooting in camera visual effects yeah there's a there's a um a, a purpose of virtual production which is the transformation of the performance so if you look at cameron's work we go back to sort of like 2009 and where we had um motion capture people walking through the jungles and being captured their performance being captured digitally it's about that and um, now the way that that's transferred across to real-time rendering and when we had the RTX technology to be able to actually start to render in real time we thought about how can we use those data pipelines and attach real-time assets to them which is what we started to do and then uh, we took those 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 concepts to set uh, very early on which was more fully virtual shooting um, where, where you were filming with simul cams, you were working in a, a, a much more synthetic environment. And then, and then the LED started to come around where we could actually um, shoot people in front of augmented um, scenes and sets. But even before that, we were working with real-time compositing. So we kind of specialize in injecting real humans into this world. That's kind of one of our um, fundamental places where our company started was to take an optical image of a real performer and to inject that into a multi-layered um, sort of real-time VFX and um, which you know so that so there's there's all these sort of like different methods different pipelines mm. 
But fundamentally, it's all about human beings performing and translating that into a asset in, or, or a simulation or, 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 or visualization. Yeah. And I guess, you know, there is a lot of, um, because of the, the marketing and the, the explosion around the use of LED technology, that's almost becoming synonymous with virtual production. I think it's important for people to bear in mind that there is a huge tool set of virtual production that is not just large LED walls. And you look at the broadcasting industry, you've been doing virtual production and virtual sets for quite some years now. You look at the work at, at BBC Sport and amazing. Um, it's amazing what they've been able to achieve with, mm. with traditional graphics engines mm. um, and the use of, of the newer game engine technology that's, that's really coming to the forefront of, of visual effects and, and real time. Um, but I guess what would be interesting to explore then is why has there been this explosion of, of interest in virtual production in the last couple of years? Is it purely down to, you know, great marketing on the half of Disney and ILM? Is it to the capabilities it brings to a slightly hamstrung industry related to, the, you know, the situation with COVID and the pandemic? These things sort of combined together into a perfect It was, storm. It was happening was anyway. It was it was coming anyway. Yeah. We're, we're digital native beasts. We kind of like get into something. We make it faster. We make it quicker. We make it often cheaper as well. So there's ways that we, you know, when you digitize a process, when you virtualize production, that's what's happening. And basically, it's all about those tools and those things that are, that we've now got that we can now use to to, to do that. So it's the arrival of those uh, technologies that that has enabled us to do all of that. And, you know, yeah. so, um, yeah. Sorry, I was, I was distracted so, there for a moment. Somebody walking through the studio. Uh, yeah, you're in a very apt yeah, we're place. In our to, uh, so, so, what, so I'll, I'll tell people what we're doing here. Um, this is our development studio. Yeah. So we don't develop on set. When we go to set, we take verified production pipelines with us. We don't. Uh, have surprises. There's enough of those as it is when you get there. So, um, so, so here in the here, here's where we we actually spend a lot of time developing the pipelines and working with all these different technologies. So, in camera LED, mixed reality, and then fully synthetic real time animation. So we we look at that as a spectrum, and and this is the place where we develop all of those pipelines. So and I guess that's, that's this is an important area to, to go into then is is the skills needed and the we'll get onto the technology bit um, mm. in a moment. But I think that the the understanding and the learning curve for producers and DOPs and artists in how to move into virtual production and how to uh, apply this process. You know, what are the key you know, top five or top 10 things that you would expect or, or, you know, encourage people to have a really good understanding of if someone, you know, said to them, right, we want to do this in virtual production. Um, where do you start with that process? Um, I think you've got to look at the the expectations of the makers and, and what their final pr product is, is to be. Um, so it's very different if you're looking from a television perspective to a cinematic perspective and then you get into sort of like stylistic genre questions as to how you know how do you want this to look do you want it to look like a you know a photorealistic drama or are you aiming towards a more you know fantastic avatar sort of approach so really really the questions for us start there and then it then you then you move into it to, to, to apply the technology to achieve those certain looks um, so does that answer your question, or do, do you want me to go into more about the skills of doing that? I think a bit more into the skills, specifically, specifically around you know the production process and and how people should plan and think about shooting on a stage, on an LED stage, for example, or or a large virtual production stage, versus what you would do on a on a physical set or or you know on on location. Because I'm guessing lighting mm. and color a, and all these things. You know the the the, the, the thought process for a, a a DOP or a lighting uh, technician become very different to shooting against physical. Okay, 
Yeah, so so part of my job when I work with, if I work in a kind of role as a virtual production director where I'm put in with the sort of to, to sit with the DOP, the VFX supervisors and the, the other heads of department, um, it's really about those people don't need to change their skills. They need to bring them in and we need to help them. Uh, the sort of virtual productions department's job is to provide the tools to those people to help them to 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 create. Um, so, although that we need skills, the virtual production department needs skills. But we don't, and and it's fantastic if we have DOPs and production designers that have worked in, with virtual production technologies because they've, you know, so so hands-on set is 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 key for that. And ev and everybody should try to get involved in a virtual production shoot to 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 see how it works for their specific you know, department and trade. Um, but the, you know, the, the, it's a misconception that we need to all retrain and all become sort of like fantastic in, you know, a blueprint development, because you don't. Well, you shouldn't yeah. have to. That's what we're doing here. That's what other companies like ours. That's what the virtual production industry is providing to the rest of the, you know, the, re the rest of the creative industry. I, I just want a DOP to turn up and to, I want him to, to know what he wants. Um, and if and it, you present something and they say no, that's not what we want, and then you work on that and you and you get it to that to that that situation. So, the, the, but there is a skill gap in virtual production yeah. itself, um, and that comes down to a lot about access to the right technologies. There's um, a lot of people at the moment that are hacking together sort of more independent sort of solutions, which is fantastic as a movement and is really healthy. And who knows, the next ILM may be in one of these little places. But for the production industry, there's an absolute need for us to have skilled, trained, you know, virtual production, camera assistants, tracking engineers, motion capture engineers, all of these things come into, um, you know, a bit of a bottleneck right. at the moment. And so, and I, to, so, and I think the first place you need, the first thing you need to do is download an engine. Choose your engine, download it, get playing with it, and then try to fly a camera. Try to create something in that in that space. And anybody can do that. You don't even have to be a, you know, it's just something that you've got to sort yeah. of commit to do. Well, that, I mean, that's. It's, I think it'd be good for everyone to hear that from the non-technical element of virtual production you aren't necessarily needing to learn a huge amount of new skills you know that the there are groups both within you know big studios and and uh companies like yourselves who can support that journey and basically be an, an onset you know support team and technical team just like if you were doing any other shoot where you would have grips dolly technicians lighting technicians you know vfx supervisors it's just an extension of that and instead of a physical set, you might have a big 80 meter, 100, you know, 80 degree wall there that's presenting the, the data to you. I guess the process is yeah. different. Pro literally, yeah. the process of the, the filming production can be a little different to normal. There's new checks that you've had to add into the equation, you know, between shots that, that need to be done to make sure things are um, going down to the data and say being saved and done correctly yeah. so there there are there are practical um considerations on set um and, and also whenever you're working so we we work with um we work with unity we work with unreal engine and with those with those um with those there are other technologies that you then bring it you know bring into it and it's that those areas where we need the, the skills yeah. Uh, integration skills is a big part. Yeah, and I guess the, the interesting thing that I've found as we've, you know, worked on pr countless virtual production projects now at NVIDIA is most of the technologies being used already existed and were used either in other types of virtual production or in other industries or other parts of the media entertainment pipeline. Um, and yeah. they're all coming together from different places and being, you know, combined into this solution. And I think one of the things that we are going to see, and this kind of leads us nicely onto the technology area, um, one of the things that we will see in the coming years at, you know, major trade shows and events like SIGGRAPH and IBC and NAB um, and the Media Production Technology Show, of course, 
um, are vendors developing tools specifically for the needs of virtual production and the growing needs? You know, we, you know, we're currently doing work with the the LED manufacturers like Ro and LG and Samsung, um, and the LED processing manufacturers like Brompton and Megapixel, um, the tracking companies like Encam and Mosis and Stipe. And they're all developing improved versions of their technology to meet the needs that are being presented by the ILMs, the Netflixes, the OSFs of the world and saying, right, this is great for today, but this next production needs much higher resolution on the walls. This next production needs a tracking system that can go in and out of a vehicle and then up on a gimbal just because this is the shot they want. All of this feedback is coming into the technology now um, and I think that's it's an important thing to discuss is what are those important technology areas? You know, what are those key pillar stones of this new generation of virtual production was specifically around, you know, LED wall shooting? What, what do you see as like, you know, the key five things or however many things that you feel there are um, that combine in that world to to create these environments? Can I talk? I need to talk about the creative side of it a little um, in, 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 because just just to because that's also yeah. technical in my mind of, because one of the things that I think, you know, the, the, the kind of rules that I'm thinking of about shooting LED um, at the moment, um, I'm going to talk about depth and I'm going to talk about how on an LED shoot, um, if you just have an LED and you just have a person, you're never going to get a decent shot out of it in you're not gonna have much space. You're not gonna have much room. What you need to do is you need to create the depth between the LED and your character. So um, if you look at like the, you know, there's plenty of images around the internet now of, of LED stages and sets and all the best ones, they, they kind of use a very traditional approach to um, filmmaking. They're using a projection background. Um, okay, it's augmented now and it moves with the camera. That is amazing and is another level of, you know, that's taking it on to a new level. But, it's, but essentially, though, you're still sealing an image and you're, you're, you're creating depth layers. Now, the interesting part for us is when we can start to look at how we can have the LED, but also have those layers. And I think that for us, that's one of our key areas is how can we get into the realms of what's called deep compositing, where we're using potentially the AI technologies that we're now leveraging. And we're using those to recognize and to, pre to, to give us that depth map and so that we can bring in all of those other things again. Because in, in VFX terms, I'm an old VFX director and I like VFX and I like what it, I can do anything that I wish. And so I'm not going to lose that. You're not going to put me on a stage and go, there's an LED, this is all you've got. I'm like, no, no that ain't going to work. We need to have those freedoms yeah. to do those things. So horses for courses, LED in certain places, fully, you know, fully virtual shots, fully digital shots for those, for those, for those sort of situations. And when you start to break it down, um, that's how we work. We, we were very much of a, of, you know, that production background to the business. So we always work on how, what are we making? And I think that, um, but so deep yeah. compositing is one of my... So I think that, that comes into a question that I saw that we had from, from the audience um, about production design, mm. um, where the idea of creating stages and sets both in the 3D engine itself, but extending that, production design into the physical space, so, you know, it's a massive requirement to improve the realism, the effect, the lighting, the shadows. But if it's done right, it's, it's the VFX dudes love you for it because if you do this right, you're passing plates down the line. If you have got post VFX to come in, the, the assets that you're creating are so much more um, of another level, the better because you're, you, so production design is tremendously important. One of my favorite things is to scan the outside world item that we're gonna use and take that into the virtual world. So we, we take a pillar, for instance, we scan that, per, you know, scan that pillar. We're gonna have that pillar on set. We did a big, big um, dungeon scene for a, for a movie and it involved us creating an entire, you know, area where this fight scene was going to happen. Um, well, then we, we, we augmented the rest of the, of the dungeon um, and but the camera would see all of those movements and everything. So, yeah. It was all real. 
we had to have real set but we, we 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 create that and take that then into into the virtual world i think it's a bit easier to do it that way than creating things in the virtual world and then trying to recreate them in real yeah, life <laughs> absolutely um so this i mean this uh, anyway, we're getting a bit tight on time so i think the, there's a very interesting question here um about you know with with where we are at with the technologies that we have now you know with with real-time ray tracing and obviously shout out to rtx um you know real-time motion capture and streaming data and all the various tracking systems where where do we see live production uh live virtual production going from here um and i think from my point of view i think this kind of this kind of brings in the technology piece as well you know the ability to collaborate in these environments is something that we are working very hard on uh yeah we haven't talked about pre yeah so ta we? taking this entire story even further back in the pipeline and further forward yeah. in the development of you know um more content related to the virtual production set um but connecting visual effects artists in in real time via you know we're creating a platform at the moment called omniverse that will allow people yeah. like acer on set to connect an artist from a studio in la in real time and have them manipulating the stage while the shoot is even happening um so improving the software tools is going to allow people more freedom. And whether that's tools from NVIDIA, from Unity, from Unreal, from Disguise or Notch, you know, there's there is a growing ecosystem of mm. software developers who are doing amazing work in this space, many of which came from the scalable visualization space for live events. So they understand space, they understand depth and, and real time requirements. Um, but I think we're also going to see, you know, higher resolution panels coming out which will allow you to do much higher quality um, in-camera effects because the more resolution you can capture in the lens, the more light that you can get in, the, the more realistic the backgrounds and the effects can be. Uh, and that's then going to push all mm. of the other technology up a level where we're going to need smarter screens and pipelines that do introduce you know, artificial intelligence to augment what's being done on stage. Um, and then camera manufacturers will have to develop, you know, specific technologies to better film against led walls because you know that and that's something i know that you do a lot of research in is how different cameras react to light um and and that yeah there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a key thing if we've got a chance to sort of like illuminate something to the industry with through these talks um the 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 what we're waiting for on the camera camera manufacturing side of things is for better options on our uh, sort of IP traffic coming out of the camera because everything's recorded to the card. All the value, the, you know, the clever stuff gets recorded down to the card. I don't want that. I want it out my monitoring. So please, <laughs> more 8K feeds with lots more goodness yeah. to them um, yeah. that we can get out into the, you know, because the monitoring um, out is not as uh, fantastic as we'd like it to be on the real time VFX side of things. What it captures on the card yeah. is fantastic. But, um, but so, so there's little things like that that are, you know, when we're building the systems, we go, oh, yeah. I wish we, you know, I wish we could have these things. If we had more time, there's probably another 25 things <laughs> I could come up with that are, you know, those, those things. Because we work with all of the camera manufacturers here. Um, and that's actually something we're, we're actively involved in is helping those camera manufacturers to, you know, uh, see the opportunities of what, what yeah. we're doing out the other yeah, and that's, you know, <laughs> we're, we're discussing with a lot of those manufacturers around you know ip uh, you know uncompressed out yeah. straight from the sensor to be able to improve that pipeline but it, there again more Amazing. things need to grow up around that to enable that sort of stuff to happen i'm just um, looking at a few other questions here and points that people are making um rotoscoping you know new advances in roto um i think ai is definitely going to be the future of this you know <sighs> Go and find Rotobot on LinkedIn. Go have a look at these guys. What they're, you know, what's been happening in AI and kind of in the, I'd still call it a post process or, you know, it's taking ten minutes per, whatever. It's starting to take no time whatsoever. And I think the augmentation, the, the 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 way that we can reduce the processing time by having some support of AI to, you know, do part of the Roto learn and to to deliver those yeah. results faster. Um, and the quality as well is getting, I mean, yeah, so, so 
it's it's a very exciting area, the roto area, especially in real time. You know, real time roto. Yeah. So I mean, there's I think there's a huge thing to unpack with virtual production. Um, and I think someone sort of said here, you know, is there any good resources to go and understand all of you know the different approaches to virtual production online? And I think at the moment there isn't really a really good centralized resource that explains virtual production. And I think one of the reasons behind that is everyone is still learning exactly what that guidelines, what that information needs to be. You know, we're, we're discussing and developing, you know, white papers and recommended, you know, pipelines and workflows that, we're, that, we'll, that we will be releasing with the likes of Epic and, and Acer and ARI and RED. Um, but we're still figuring a lot of these things out. And you speak to any high end studio who's doing a shoot at the moment, they are still figuring things out on set. Uh, and you'll note that, you know, ILM made a move um, with Mandalorian, I think season two and maybe Midnight Sky to build a whole new renderer, which, you know, not everyone can go and build a whole new renderer, but they identified issues that they couldn't overcome with the current crop of, of engine technology. Uh, Oh, it's a nightmare. I've got, you know, it's one of the reasons why we haven't really kind of, um, we've been very careful with our service division in regards to what films that we'll go out on and how we are expected to work on them. And part of the reason is because we want these pipelines nailed. We want them absolutely nailed down. We've been working on some of these things for like four yeah. years. And there's still yeah. sort of, so anybody that thinks you can just rock up on set with a, with a bunch of virtual production stuff, um, it's going to be in for a sharp surprise. And I think that's where they need to do the testing and, you know, get, getting to grips with all of those things. And so I think we're at such a big, we're on such a big wave that I think it's difficult. I think everybody's got to look at what does it mean to them? Mm. Um, and, and I think if you start to look at what could, what, you know, how can we, how can we utilize virtual production? How can we utilize, you know, cloud computing? How can we utilize, you know, edge computing, all of these sort of like new areas are starting to arrive now because we're at a really interesting yeah. point. I think um, the next, you know, the next 12 months in, in this area, the projects that we know are, are starting and what will come out end of this year that will have been shot in entirely new ways in virtual production, um, introducing you know, new techniques that are literally being developed sometimes on set um is mm. is a very interesting uh place that we're going to be um and i think you know we've got a few minutes left so i'll s summarize some of these things you know virtual production has been the thing long before led walls and real-time compositing and virtual sets and the use of real-time technology is here to stay i think it's you know it's a well-established thing now as people have been pointing out in the chat you know visual effects um houses are looking for real-time artists people who know real engine people who know mm. unity but i wouldn't say that that indicates anything like maya and houdini and blender and all these other tools going away you know there will still be a massive need for these experts in modeling in animation in behavioral ai we would it should work with all of them i mean that's the beauty of where we're now heading is this whole in interoperable sort of virtual production layer that we're putting yeah. in place um yeah. that it would allow an artist to be working in their native software um and it will be ported out this is why the whole usd thing for us is such a um a, a big you know a big part of the pipeline and and the, the roadmap moving forward is we need a standardization yeah. at some level um yeah. once we reach that, that that sort of level of standardization everybody can come in then and and, and start to uh <laughs> starts I think you know the cool. one of the important things that you mentioned earlier is that lots of people with you know a with production roles with director roles with lighting roles don't need to necessarily worry about everything no, please they don't. need to rely yeah. on people who understand no. virtual production just like a cameraman relies yeah. on someone who understands lighting and you know a, a set well, I can't do their job. I can't do their job. So they don't need to do my job. It's like one of those things. And the virtual department, the, the, the virtual production department, the tech, on-set tech needs is underloved. It needs more people in that area. We need, you know, so, um, and then we need people that can translate it as well across. As I say, as a DVP, that's what I kind of do is translate it across to the other departments so they feel comfortable with everything. Um, it's yeah. not got to change the... You know, it's, it's not uh, something to fear. 
Brilliant. Um, well, that's a, that's a, I think that's a great point to probably end on there. It's not something to fear. It's something to be embraced. No, get involved. Um, any more questions you have, feel free to reach out to, to me and Asa. Um, and thank you very much to Charlotte, my, and the whole team at MPTS for having us here today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, all.